I'm Brady Gentile, uh, Bonzo Finance Labs, and I am the co-founder and CEO. It's been amazing. Uh, this is kind of one of the first real ecosystem events for Hedera that's been launched. Um, we've got a bunch of amazing booths here of various projects across, uh, across the network. Uh, it's really just great meeting people face to face, people who, you know, I've known through the internet, through X for, you know, four or five years and, uh, you know, being able to meet them in person has been awesome. And then just the whole production of the, the event has been great. So it's, it's been exciting. So Bonzo Finance is the liquidity layer of Hedera. And what we mean by that is it's an open source, non-custodial lending protocol that is based on uh, Aave. And it was adapted to Hedera's EVM and native token service and some of the other nuances of the Hedera network. And the reason it's the liquidity layer of Hedera is lending protocols uniquely uh, can function as a foundation for other advanced DeFi protocols to exist on top of them, like perpetuals and futures and derivatives. And so, you know, we're really excited about being able to lay this foundation on Hedera that you know, previously didn't exist before. And the timing is, is just right for the ecosystem to make that available. I think there's a lot of work still to be done this year, as well as many, many years into the future. I think, um, you know, when you think about technology from, uh, you know, a disruptive standpoint and, and emerging tech in general, um, typically you, you end up having to uh, obviously disrupt an existing incumbent and uh, and then they will adapt and, and be able to integrate some of these new features, functionalities, technology into their offering. And usually there's a lot of competition where this new industry starts to eat their, their lunch in many ways. And so I think that process takes a really long time uh, for an industry that uh, has such legacy infrastructure. So, um, you know, we're starting to see some interesting advancements that are more mainstream and traditional finance today, like stable coins, I think is like a really good, fast, quick win um, with legislation hopefully coming this year around that, at least in the in the United States. Yeah. Um, and then I think, you know, DeFi in general um, still has a long way to go in terms of its maturity. A lot of the standards need to be figured out. There's still a lot of, you know, security and um, and regulatory uh, things that need to be figured out with regards to DeFi. And so, uh, yeah, TradFi, you know, we're still, I think, a, a, a far enough away from it. I think in the United States in general, this, um, you know, the current landscape and administration that exists is, you know, arguably more crypto friendly. And there seems to be a number of moves that are being made to try and help support the regulatory environment for the crypto space in the U.S. I do think it's a really important thing that, you know, the U.S. continues to um, be able to, to be a, a home for tech and innovation. And I think this is a really important part of that. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic about uh, the changes that need to be, you know, made and put in place around regulation. I think one thing, and it's, it's really understandable why people uh, have this misinterpretation because of the news cycles that exist. Essentially, there is there's a lot of sort of scams. You have meme coins. You have all of these things that can be perceived by uh, you know people outside of the industry as being um, you know quite immature. And and I think that's fair. I think that's accurate and true. Is is a lot of this stuff is immature. A lot of it looks like toys. But you know the concept of anything in emerging technology that has to evolve and and um, and mature. It's gonna look like a toy at first. It has to be fun, it has to be exciting. And so, you know, I think we're still in, in many ways in an infancy with regards to this sector of emerging technology where it's gonna look the way that it does. And I think, um, you know, as time goes on, is a lot of the underlying tech for dog coins and, and sushi tokens and other things, it's, it's, gonna, um, it's gonna mature and it's gonna be utilized for uh, more traditional financial instruments, um, and uh, and and we're going to see a, a more mature timeline eventually take place. Yeah, but, yeah. So I think we're still a long, far away from uh, having uh, sort of Web three be able to reach TradFi. There's a few core things that have been developed, you know, over the past ten years that I think are at a more farther along state of maturity. So stable coins is a really big one. I think, you know, from a regulatory perspective, we're going to start seeing regulation around stable coins as like a really great quick win. Um, and, and I do think stable coins are really important and they can be integrated 
pretty successfully into you know our uh, existing economy. Um, and then RWAs is another one that we're, we're starting to see traction with now. It hasn't reached the state of maturity for stablecoin as stablecoins yet, really. But um, you know, there's there's platforms like RWA.xyz that are tracking uh, you know the maturity of state of uh, RWAs from like a, a enterprise perspective and a traditional finance perspective. Sure. Um, and you know, Hedera uh, as a network, they have um, uh, partnerships with Aberdeen and ArcX and. There's been a number of RWA assets that are being uh, tokenized on the Hedera network as well. And so still at the emphasis stages and we've got a lot of room to grow, but it's definitely looking bright.